This is your 28storms.com cyclone update for Sunday the 27th of November and since much of the southern hemisphere and especially the tropics near Australia are quiet at this time the main emphasis of today's video will be on tropical cyclone 5A located in the Arabian Sea. I highly recommend that viewers go ahead and check out the latest article from the Sunday Times. The main clip is indicating that at least 19 people have lost their lives in Sri Lanka, another 30 are missing, and some 1,200 homes have been damaged and nearly 6,000 people have been displaced from their homes as a result of the tropical cyclone. Furthermore, the Colombo page is indicating that an investigation is being launched into whether the Sri Lankan Meteorology Department gave enough warning in advance of the developing tropical cyclone. Apparently there was little to no warning and that estimate appears to be accurate. Again, if you can go ahead and check out our video from about two to three days ago, we observed the latest tropical weather outlook from the Sri Lankan Meteorology Department's website, and there was no information regarding the upcoming tropical disturbance, despite it being quite detectable by all forecast models. In fact, we began to hint at the threat of a tropical weather threat posed against Sri Lanka beginning on the 18th of November. So you can go ahead and check that out. So there is certainly some blame to go around. But as of the latest forecast from the U.S. Joint Typhoon Warning Center, the good news is that the storm is pulling away from Sri Lanka and the southern tip of India. So the elevated rainfall chances will steadily begin to diminish as the storm moves out of the region. Also, some encouraging news toward the tail end of this forecast is that the U.S. Joint Typhoon Warning Center is forecasting the storm to weaken or dissipate altogether over the northern Arabian Sea due to approaching upper-level wind shear. The latest satellite animation of Tropical Cyclone 5A reveals that there is still quite a lot of convection associated with the storm, but the convection is lopsided a little bit more toward the west and northwest of the center and that is a result of the trough coming in from the west over portions of the Arabian Peninsula and the favorable upper level ridge that was once vertically stacked completely over the tropical cyclone is now beginning to shift a little bit more toward the east. We can easily see this on the University of Wisconsin wind shear analysis. The ridge that was once located directly over the storm center is now moving into the Bay of Bengal so we are getting more in the way of southeast vertical wind shear which is more than likely going to prevent the storm from strengthening much more than the current intensity and it's unlikely that the vertical wind shear is going to decrease any time in the near future as this trough over the Middle East continues to shift a little bit more toward the south. The latest forecast model run from the Zero-Z GFS continues to indicate the possibility of some strengthening as the storm continues to move toward the northwest before recurving into extreme southeast Pakistan and northwest India However, the latest shear analysis brings this forecast into question as it does not appear that the upper level conditions will be favorable enough for the intensification being shown in this model. The latest solution from the 12Z run of the ECMWF model is becoming increasingly likely with time. Of course, the European model has not been showing much in the way of additional strengthening and as we go into day 4 and day 5, the storm weakens and dissipates altogether as a result of the increasing vertical wind shear and the low level circulation will get left behind here in the Arabian Sea and then continue westward into the Arabian Peninsula but in such a weakened state that it would not provide much in the way of any heavy rainfall. So all interests in the northern Arabian Sea are still advised to keep up with the weather in the event that this tropical cyclone were to strengthen more than forecast but there are optimistic signs for the medium range in terms of this system possibly dissipating. And finally, this is just a quick look at the southern hemisphere tropics closer to the maritime continent. We don't really see anything that stands out and upper level conditions continue to be unfavorable for development. Furthermore, the models are not showing any developing tropical disturbances, at least within the next five days. But it should be noted that the Madden-Julian Oscillation is beginning to spread into the Maritime Continent and the Southern Pacific, especially as we head into early and especially mid-December. And I think the middle part of next month is going to be the period in which the tropics really start to come alive here as we work our way closer into the peak of cyclone season. So thank you for watching today's video. Keep it tuned to 28storms.com slash cyclone for more frequent updated information on Tropical Cyclone 5A as it continues to move northwest in the Arabian Sea.